these current affairs lectures are mainly intended for engineering service exam 2021 but these lectures will also cover the civil service preliminary related current affairs and also for railway management service if any exam is coming this year for that exam also this current affairs will be helpful first let's just see the topic about wetlands so recently there was a news that 10 new Ramsar sites were added to the Ramsar list from India. So here we have important terms like Ramsar sites, wetlands, 10 new sites etc. So these Ramsar sites we will see in our theory classes. Wetlands also we have studied in our theory classes. This Ramsar, the name is related to an Iranian city. The city is in Iran. Their own convention happened in 1971 to protect the wetlands. So wetlands of international importance were given protection under this convention. As per the convention, important wetlands are listed as Ramsar sites. India had 26 Ramsar sites till last year. 27th was added last year that we have seen East Kolkata wetlands. Sorry, uh, 27th site we saw last year. It was Sundarbans of Indian side. Now again 10 more is added. Now total Ramsar sites in India is 37. Wetlands are those lands which are partially or fully covered with water seasonally or permanently like river banks, marshes, swamps, different varieties of land, landforms will come under wetlands but the important characteristic is the water. They will be always having some water content but they are not so deep. So the depth should be less than 6 meter but it should be wet so that growth of Plants, big leaves, macrophytes are more. Fishes will be there, birds will be there. This biodiversity is more. So these wetlands are of ecological importance. Earlier times, we will see this wetland as wastelands. It, it will be used for as a dumping ground, sewage ground, etc. Now we have realized the ecological importance of these wetlands. They they play an important role in water buffering, conserving the biodiversity, recycling the nutrients, filtering the water, maintaining the groundwater level like that. Very precious ecological services are served by these wetlands. So we have to protect the wetlands. Main aim of the Ramsar Convention is the wise use of the wetlands. Because these wetlands are traditionally used by locals for fish cultivation, paddy cultivation etc. So without disturbing the ecological balance, how we can utilize it is the main aim of this convention. Now, now let us see about the newly added sites. So in three states, new sites got added. So you can remember this name, Maharashtra, Punjab and UP. If it is civil service exam, this data is very important because they can ask question directly from this data. Where is this community reserve? Name the Ramsar site from Maharashtra. Like the direct questions can come in civil service preliminary exam. But in EAC exam such direct questions may not come. So far we haven't seen any question on wetland in the say, engineering service preliminary exam. But indirect questions may come. What is a wetland? What is a community reserve? What is bad sanctuary? So like that indirect questions can come in engineering service exam. But for civil service exam, this data is very important. In Maharashtra, it is Nandur Madameshwar bad sanctuary. So here in the list, many of them are bad sanctuaries. So what is the relation between the bad sanctuary and the wetland? There is an important relation. Many times we see that these wetlands are home for numerous migratory birds. 
since these lands have very good biodiversity especially the aquatic population like fishes and small creatures which are living in water the birds will get enough food there migratory birds varieties mainly feed on the fish varieties so it is an easy feeding ground for them so when they are traveling when they see such lands they will try to flock around such lands for their food and breeding needs so many of these wetlands are important bird sanctuaries already protected as bird sanctuaries mainly housing migratory birds at the same time they are also ecologically important wetlands so in the 26 a older list also we have many bad sanctuaries at the conserved sites, Ramsar sites. And one point you have to note here is the first Ramsar site in Maharashtra, state of Maharashtra. This is the first site. So this point you can remember. And next in Punjab, three are added. Bias Conservation Reserve. Kesopur Miyani Community Reserve and Nangal Wildlife Sanctuary. So these are also already protected areas. So as per the protected area list we have seen there are different types of protected areas like National Park, Wildlife Sanctuaries, Bad Sanctuaries, Community Reserves, Conservation Reserves etc. Here what is the difference between a Conservation Reserve and a Community Reserve? The main difference is that conservation reserve is in government land. Government land, it is restricted land, protected land owned by government. Community reserve can be private land or community land. So here in the name it is clear that this community, this community is conserving that land. And this is the first community reserve notified in India. So this also you can take note. It was the first community reserve. And now they have given important. Now they have been declared as Ramsar site also. What is the speciality of this Bias conservation reserve? You can remember like garial population is there. Garials are and protected wildlife it is found in this bias reserve what is the special use of nangal wildlife sanctuary there are different animals like pangolin so nangal pangolin bias garial like that you can relate and remember uh, i am emphasizing this because in civil service preliminary exam this kind of questions are also possible it is wildlife sanctuary. Wildlife sanctuary is considered for protecting certain species of wild animals. Along with that, their habitat will also be preserved. So these are the three new Ramsar sites in Panchara. Next is in UP. UP got six sites. This bat sanctuary is also known as Chandrajega Azad bat sanctuary. And this is a combination of two small lakes, Parvati and Aranga. And Saman bat sanctuary is famous for cranes. Cranes are strokes. So different kinds of strokes are in this sanctuary. So you can remember Saman strokes. Different types of cranes are available in this bat sanctuary. And this also again a combination of small lakes, Sarsa and Navar. Two legs, two small legs. It is famous for Saras cranes. So this name you can relate. Saras cranes. These are one of the tallest flying birds in the world. So that is the importance. Then this is a bird sanctuary. This is also a bird sanctuary, but it is an important bird area. So we have. Bombay Natural History Society, which designate important bird areas in India. So, this is one of the bird areas recognized by that NGO. In this topic, wetlands, we can see one more news that was about the new 
wetland conservation rules. So here it is new. That means that earlier version of the rules was there. So that was notified in 2010. Now the new rules will be replacing that 2010. Actually these rules were notified in 2016 and there were certain criticisms on it including the feedback from different people. New set of rules is being published now and is being not that is it will come into effect. So what are the important difference that has happened between this 2010 and 2016 rules? It envisages for an authority, authority in the state level, state or union territory level, state wetland authority that is dealing with the conservation of the wetlands in the state. So what, is, what are their duties? They have to come up with a comprehensive list. So this word is mentioned. Comprehensive means they have to include each and everything. Comprehensive list of wetlands in the state and you, or union territory. And also the comprehensive list of activities that can be allowed or prohibited in these wetlands. So this, uh, this role of deciding what are the activities that has to be prohibited, regulated and what are the activities that can be allowed in the conserved land is with the state or union authority. That is the important change here. Earlier we had a central wetland regulatory authority that was dealing with the dealing with these things that is for regulation of the activities in the wetlands. Now this rules propose that it should be replaced by a national wetlands committee. This the powers of the estuary authority is divested to the state and union territory authority so that the central committee will now hold only the monitoring, monitoring power. So they will be monitoring the activities of the state authorities but they don't have any regulatory action. So that is the difference. And what are the other duties of this authority? They have to come up with the, the plan. Plan for maintenance, conservation, wise use of the wetlands etc. They have to come up with the comprehensive plan. And this committee should include experts from various fields from fisheries from ecology environmental science from social science from water management like that uh, some expert areas are mentioned from those areas they have to include experts in the authority and this authority will be headed by the state environment minister and this rules list out a certain activities that should be prohibited. So there are in industries, setting up of new industries in wetlands, uh, expansion of the existing industries to the wetland is strictly prohibited. And then disposal of waste. So no waste should be disposed to the wetlands. This include construction and demolition waste, hazardous waste including e-waste, solid waste from municipal authorities, effluents from industries, so like this kind of waste are strictly prohibited to be dumped in the wetlands. So this effluents can be treated and dumped but other solid waste should not be dumped. Dumping of solid waste is one of the main reason for the degradation of wetlands. Wetlands their major character is the presence of moisture rate. Once this construction demolition waste are dumped to the wetlands they are like reclaiming the wetlands for other use. It will be converted into a normal land, normal land which can be used for any construction purpose. So, avoiding that dumping of waste in wetlands is strictly prohibited. Also, encroachment of the wetlands. Once this waste soil everything is dumped to the wetlands, it will become converted to the land for agriculture or construction purpose that is encroachment. Illegally, people will carry out construction in such areas. So this encroachment of the wetlands have played a very crucial role in floods, urban floods that we are seeing because of the encroachment of this wetlands only. 
this urban land is reducing its capacity to hold excess water that is leading to flash floods. The criticisms of the 2016 rules were taken care to some extent. That is, they have mentioned some prohibited activities. Earlier, there was no prohibited activities mentioned. So, some activities are mentioned. Also, there was criticism about the state authority. We can see it in two ways. It is about decentralization. So, the production of these wetlands will be more effective. It is decentralized. That is, more authority is given to the local bodies, local bodies and local communities. They can protect these wetlands more. So, this will help in the decentralization, right? Rather than direct control from the central authority, this will help in this. There is some drawback if the full authority is given to the state, how they are going to conserve the land will be a question. Sometimes they may be ignoring some aspects or they may be acting with their interest to the use regarding the use of land. So, there needs a central monitoring. That is why monitoring is still with the central government. So, we have to effectively regulate and monitor their activities. Otherwise, proper conservation of the wetlands we cannot ensure. But on the other hand, this is an important step in de decentralizing the powers. And another criticism is that there is no mention of how to appeal the decisions of the authority. Earlier rules, it clearly mentioned that we can appeal it in the National Green Tribunal, any decisions taken by the central authority. But now this new rules is silent about that. It doesn't say anything about appealing. So this kind of criticism and the features are important for the civil service exam. So regarding engineering service exam, you may get some questions about the rules itself. We have been watching that different important rules of the government is coming in the preliminary exams like features of these rules, features of the rules 1, 2, 3 etc. Some features will be given you have to select the correct options. So, this is also an potential rule that can be asked the question like that. But the detailed analysis is not required in ESC exam. It is important for the civil service. So, what could be the possible questions? I have given hint what could be the possible questions that can come from this topic. For proper questions, you can refer to our Hyperloop magazine, Hyperloop Mandalim magazine that is published as PDF in our site. Thank you.